So I'm going to show you today the making of a rather pretty, I think, high-waisted skirt. And I absolutely love the waistline of this skirt. Scallop edging was very popular during the 30s and 40s era and I think it's really pretty. It is a challenge to get the scallops absolutely <laughs> smooth and even all around. You might remember the blouses that I made with the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company and Janine Spen Love, and they were designed to they kind of pleat into the waist and they're really suitable for wearing with a high-waisted skirt or high-waisted trousers so i thought i would be sensible it often happen does it uh, i'd be sensible and make myself a high-waisted scalloped waistline skirt in gray cotton that will go with all the blouses oh goodness me, <laughs> been eaten, uh, that would go with all the blouses I made and just be a really useful spring, summer, autumn skirt. So whether I can get all those scallops to look nice and even and look as they should <laughs> when I make the skirt, time will tell. But it looks, famous last words, quite uh, easy-ish pattern so we'll see how it goes and then of course what the result looks like i started by laying out the fabric and she can't be asleep i've only just put the fabric down the skirt just to remind you of it with the pattern has eight gauze each with a scalloped top and there are four pattern pieces a side skirt front, side skirt back, and the centre skirt back and front, which are cut out twice and seamed down the centre. You create those eight gores, each with the scallop at the top, and of course you can see that I've made sure to place all the pattern pieces along the grain line before cutting them out. With my favourite pair of long bladed really sharp scissors and then just to show you what each gore looks like at the top, it's shaped in this curve. So there isn't anything complicated about creating that really decorative waistline. It's literally eight curved gauze or panels, however you want to call them, which are stitched together at the side seams. I just thought I'd show you the scene outside my sewing room. Much cosier in here. So I started by stitching all the seams. I decided on French seams, so first of all stitching wrong side to wrong side, pressing and then stitching right side to right side. And what I hadn't realised is that right from the outset I've made a very elementary mistake. I'm rather ashamed to fess up, but when I came to try the skirt on, it was way too big. And six scores fitted perfectly, but eight scores were too, too many. And I stared at the pattern, thinking, how did I go wrong, when I realised that the size was just way larger than my usual size. I mean, who does that? What a muppet! The things I got very used to vintage patterns fitting me. The average height in 1940s was 5 foot 2 and I'm 5 foot 3 in petite. See, vintage patterns from the 30s and 40s tend to be rather good for me on um, now. So what I'm doing here is using a hand mirror to redraw the scallops because while it's easy enough to take the seams in at the top so the waist will fit, if I just do that without altering the shape of the scallops, the scallops will lose their dip. So I'm having to recut round all the scallops and then for my sins also do the same for the facing that's going to be attached around the waistline too. And in some places I just had to create a little seam in the facing. So this is actually a simple skirt to sew if you concentrate properly from the outset. 
and here I am just stitching around all those scalloped edges to stitch the facing onto the waistline right side to right side and you can see that I'm just leaving the needle in when I reach the corner of a dip of the scallop and then moving the needle around to go around the next scallop and these vintage machines that trudge along slowly are just perfect for this kind of work I think and here I'm just turning the scallops round to wrong side to wrong side so that the facing lies inside and I gave them a careful press being sure to roll out the fabric to create a nice neat edge for each scallop and I'm also thinking of using this braid I just found it at the haberdashery without looking for it and it goes perfectly with my grey skirt so I think I need to stitch that on to emphasise the scallops and then while the pattern didn't require any stiffening or interfacing around that scallop waist and I did decide to put some in because I wanted these scallops to hold their shape and I had forgotten to mention I think in my introduction that I just used a pure cotton in charcoal grey and you can see I also decided to put scallops into the hem of the skirt as well with my own little flourish and I also stitched braid to the hem too so it matches the waistline and I'm wearing the skirt with the yellow gold or ochre top the one that I sewed in collaboration with Janine Spenlove and the Winter Sewing Pattern Company and you can see the characteristic 30s lines of this skirt. 30 skirts emphasised an elongated figure, bearing in mind that the average height was 5 foot 2, and flared outwards towards the hemline. And you can also see that berets were a popular accessory as well. And I think this is a vintage looking but really wearable outfit today and the whole outfit has been handmade by me apart from the shoes of course which are true 1940s vintage slingbacks which were very popular in that era although they do have a tendency to unsling um, themselves and then the only other thing I didn't make was the berry itself but I did make the felt flowers which you can see how in my felt flowers video and of course the top and the skirt while I do use a lot of true 30s or 40s vintage fabrics the one time I tend to use modern fabrics or modern shop bought fabrics is to get plain fabrics because you do need some solid coloured separates in your wardrobe too I think especially skirts or culottes because then we can show off this fancy floral blouse that I also made with Janine and the blouse was a remnant piece of floral cotton rayon mix and I'm just noticing here that having rained all day the moment I don't want the sun when I'm trying to fill it's coming in and striking my skirt typical typical but you get the you get the idea I can wear my most flowery blouses with this skirt and this was the other blouse I made with Janine the one with the petal shapes around the neck because these tops are kind of pleated into the waistline they were meant to be worn with these high-waisted separate so different to modern blouses which tend to have a massive tails to them that sort of bulk out if you tuck them in I think that's why this look is so ingenious but of course you wouldn't want to do it with fast fashion because the clothes are then made to 
fit you exactly around the waist area which if you're making clothes that you want to fit lots of people you don't want them to be too fitted thank you so much for watching me i hope you'll like this video and consider subscribing too so i'm going to show you today how i'm <laughs>